Hey guys, so today I read Jonah, and uh, you, you all know the story probably about how Jonah the prophet was called by God to go to Nineveh and speak out against it. Nineveh is the capital of the Assyrians, who were God's enemies at this point. They were um, very hostile against Israel, and so obviously there's some nas nationalistic pride and um, jealousy against them for you know doing all these bad things to them. And so Jonah decides to go the opposite way to Tarshish, which is in modern day Spain. And um, so you have like the Mediterranean, right? So he goes this way um, and Nineveh is over here in the middle of the, um, I'm thinking it's modern day, like Iraq, Iran area. And so he's going way the opposite way. And so on his way, God, you know, throws him into the sea, basically. Well, the, the fishermen, they throw him into the sea and um, God appoints, it says that he appoints a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And so Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. That's verse uh, 17 of chapter one. And then what was really interesting and what stuck out to me today of all the God shots you could pick um, was verse 10 of chapter two. Uh, it says, and the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah out upon the dry land. And what just really stuck out to me was that like God, I mean, there's so many things in that that sentence, but God just spoke to the fish. He didn't irritate it. He didn't force it to do anything. He just talked to it. And the fish is like, okay, I'm sure. <laughs> and, and so what's amazing is that for one, you have this massive fish, um, this massive sea creature that, um, you know, a lot of times they're referred to as, as sea monsters, as these great um, beings that are, that are scary and frightening and something that a fisherman would never want to see. Um, and this great terrifying creature just obeys God. And and this prophet who's supposed to be God's spokesman, and we, we saw yesterday and the day before, um, Jonah actually does speak out against uh, several great things of injustice in the nations of Israel and Ju Judah. And, and you know, he's, he's this actual prophet who is doing good things for the Lord. But then all of a sudden he says, no, I don't want to do what you're asking of me. And yet this fish, this, this big fish, um, is is willing to do what God asks of him. And what's also amazing is that God speaks the language of the fish, whatever that is. Um, and I just think that's so cool that God, you know, he's He's created every single animal with such sophistication and, and knows every single one of their languages and every single one of their names and their personalities and their distinctions. And it's incredible. Um, and, and it's just like our God to... Um, to not just make everything so beautiful, but to to learn its language and to um, delight in um, using them <laughs> to to accomplish His will. Um, and so I just love the the multifaceted nature of God's character and um, His inclusion of animals in His salvation plan for a wicked nation that wanted nothing to do with God and nothing to do with his people, um, but chose to attack and kill them. And he led them to repentance. And, and it says even their cattle, um, <laughs> all of all the animals um, in Nineveh were saved because of Jonah, even though he didn't want them to be. Um, and so again, at the end, at the very, very end of Jonah, um, God says, will you not you know, because he, he made this plant come up and then this worm ate the plant and Jonah was really bad, sad because he's like, man, like this was my shade and my shelter and it's gone now. And he's lamenting over this plant and God's like, don't I have the right as creator of the universe to lament over this city of 120,000 people and their cattle? And, and some commenters think that the reason God said this is because he's like, maybe if, you know, Jonah isn't willing to save the city for the sake of its people, maybe he'll be able to save it for the sake of their cattle and, or, or at least be okay with it because God's obviously going to save it and he does. But it's just amazing to see God's love for animals come through um, in so many unique ways in this book. So it's not the main point of the book, but either way, um, it is pretty cool and it does show the heart of God. So thanks for listening.